Thanks to RIU Vertical Events for putting it on, to Argonaut, the sponsor. Uh, I must admit, you forgot Minres as uh, our key joint venture partner in developing Mount Marion. You need to, I need to thank Chris too. You'd get upset if I didn't mention him. Um, it gives me great pleasure to, uh, to tell you about our new Spargo's Lithium project, uh, previously known as the Spargo's Nickel project. Um, we were alerted by the actions of some of our neighbours about four months ago. Um, and I'll tell you what we've found so far. But just to tell you, you know, who New Metals is, you know, we, we obviously uh, believed in lithium early, uh, got into Mount Marion, developed that. It took us six years and through a couple of pricing cycles to develop that uh, with Minres as the, the operator and Ganfeng as the off-taker. Um, we then moved, once we were in construction there, to move into battery recycling. You know, we wanted more exposure to all the battery materials. The best way to do that was to recycle the batteries at the end. There was no one there in 2017. Um, so we developed a process over a number of years. We have an operation uh, at the moment in Hilkenbach, Germany, and we're currently building a plant for Mercedes-Benz in Kuppenheim. Uh, that will finish, it'll start commissioning sort of mid-next year. Uh, and be completed by the end of next year. So, you know, all of our technologies, and that's, you know, in terms of processing, that's where a lot of our skills lie. Um, what we've been doing over the last sort of two years is demonstrating first quartile operating costs and low carbon footprint. And they're important, obviously, when you're selling plants and licensing technologies. We've got fantastic industry partners, both in the battery recycling business as customers with Mercedes-Benz, Steel Company of Canada. Uh, and ultimately what we want to deliver to our shareholders is really the Franco Nevada of battery materials royalties, right? So instead of leveraging cash, we're leveraging our technologies. Uh, the battery recycling, every battery recycling plant will generate eight different products, um, which I'll go into next, you know? So from battery recycling, you get graphite, graphite lithium, cobalt, nickel, you get copper, aluminium, manganese, um, and ammonium sulphate, which is our tailings product, which is a fertiliser. So recycling for us was the logical step. So we went from upstream mining to end of the cycle recycling. Uh, we have some interests in between. And the reason is because, you know, we, we can see that there's going to be forecast lithium deficits, uh, especially out to 2023. You know, the brine producers haven't really produced that much. It's been the hard rock miners and the Chinese converters that have added the majority of new lithium carbonate uh, units since 2015. But recycling will take over from mine production somewhere between 2038 and 2040. But that's a long way off. Until then, we need a lot more spodumene and spodumene conversion to supply the lithium that's needed to fuel the EV. Uh, and so that's where you can see the gap between the, uh, the pro possible, probable and operating mines and what we think are the base case and upside case for electric vehicles. So near metals, you know, we, we out of Mount Marion, we still have 70% of the Eli technology with Minres owning 30%. That's a, that's a process that we've been developing with them for about a decade, um, which is really about converting lithium chloride through to lithium hydroxide. Um, it'll make a, a fundamental difference in, in, in Brian or operating costs for lithium, not so relevant when the lithium price is 75,000 bucks, but once you get down to 20,000 and below, it starts becoming much more interesting. We have some investments in a cathode and anode maker. Uh, the cathode guys are here in Australia. The, the anode guys are based over in San Diego. Small interest in a cell producer. But our core business is the battery recycling because it delivers us all of those commodities back uh, at the lowest points in the cost curve with the lowest carbon footprint. But I digress. I'm happy that we, uh, we stumbled uh, back into some upstream lithium. So it, it, it was very, very fortuitous. So originally Spargo's was uh, a 1970s nickel boom prospect, about 50 k's south, southwest of Coolgardie. Um, you know, it, it's a nice big slab of greenstone uh, on the on the Ida Fault, uh, it's a very very interesting address. Obviously, you know you've got a number of very significant deposits along the Ida Fault. Um, you know, going I mean around us you've got St George, then you've got Meadowhawk, then you've got Aura Band of West Farmers, you've got Mount Isa, you've got Hancock, and then right up the end you've got Timmy Goida. 
So um, essentially, you know, we, we went straight through to the database and back starting at the original 1968 Cell Trust exploration and diamond drill logs going then through to Spargo's exploration and, uh, you know, identifying all of these pegmatites that are logged, but when you're looking for nickel, you know, you, you don't assay them. So we found more than 20 pegs, uh, and then it's a matter of, well, you know, some of these diamond core holes go back into the 70s, so we were only able to locate 11 out of the 29 drill holes. And so we sent the boys out to the lab, uh, at, sorry, out to our storage in Welshpool, and pulled out the core, and we've got pegmatites with visible spodumene uh, in them, You've got to make all the cautionary statements and an estimate of there. But, uh, you know, you can, we can see the sponge marine crystals, the black light shows it up, uh, 20 log pegmatites in 29 holes and not one assay for lithium of any map pegmatite, which is crazy. Uh, so there's definitely potential for multiple stack pegmatites. Um, that's what it looks like under the, under the core, uh, sorry, under the black light. In terms of you know what the the geology looks like, um, it's 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 just textbook, right? So you know we've got a granite source, uh, at least one at this stage. We think it's from the western one, the Wulganji Monza granite. That seems to be where the pegmatites are uh, sort of becoming deeper and approaching that. Then they sort of outcrop going to the northeast. So north of the north of this pegmatite dike. So essentially, what you want is you want a source. You have the, the protodikes uh, open up and then you've got some uh, pegmatites on the contacts between the ultramafics and the basalts, some, some the ultramafics and the felsics. Uh, and this map is something that we recently discovered, never digitised, it was a 1970 Spargo's exploration map. So we were very, very pleased to find that there were uh, the pegmatites at the surface. So north of that proterozoic diet We've got nothing except, spe except pegmatites intersected in diamond drilling and RC drilling, which is not a bad start. South of there, we've got absolutely no drilling and outcropping pegmatites, and I've got a little bit in the bag there if anyone wants to come up and, and have a look after this. So, you know, we've got 13 interpreted units there, um, and I feel like a kid in a candy shop, right? It's what a beautiful place to start. And analogous settings to make it major local deposits. It really reminds me of, of Mount Marion where we had the depot granite, we had a prot dike to the north and then you've got the intrusions and so the pegmatites were coming up between the softer ultramafics and the basalts. Um, fortunately, it didn't stick out of the ground like Mount Marion did, right? Because otherwise someone else would have found it. So there is a little bit of cover uh, on some of them. Uh, so, you know, we, we are very, very keen to, to get stuck into this in terms of strike length, we've got eight strike kilometres uh, and strike length of pegmatites, we've got them identified over about two kilometres and there's multiple uh, parallel outcropping pegmatites. So watch this space. So, you know, the main thing to do, uh, certainly over the next couple of months while it's warm, we'll be doing a lot of mining from the desk, uh, building up uh, a multi-layer database, resampling and assaying holes, uh, going through re-logging the old RC chips. Uh, we'll be giving a, a, an update, uh, I'd say early December, uh, around you know, what, we've, what we've found in the intervening period and some assays and, and you know, more vertical, uh, sorry, more visual uh, intercepts once we bring them back. Um, and yeah, plan, you know, we've signed a, a, a heritage agreement, we'll have to do a survey before we can get in and execute the drill programs, but, you know, in terms, we've got 55 square kilometres over eight strike kilometres with all of the pegmatites and you've got historic pegmatites in diamond drilling, so, you know, what a fantastic place to start. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I told you to be short and sharp. Uh, you can come and get us uh, at the coffee break. Thank you.